Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. These days the used car market is super volatile, meaning that every now and then there's some pretty wacky and wonderful cars that you can buy on the cheap. Cars that will actually move on their own steam that is. I'd be surprised if you hadn't heard of all of the cars on this list. However, I am sure you would overlook some of them when thinking about a £5,000 budget. If you're one of the 75% of viewers that are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that big red button now and join this awesome community. In no particular order, number one on this list is the Volkswagen Phaeton. The Phaeton was introduced in 2002 and was a massive flop in the United States where production would end in 2006. However, there was more of an appetite for it across the pond and so production would continue all the way until 2016 for the European market. It was poised as Volkswagen's premium class vehicle and thus commanded six-figure list prices for certain models when it was new. The problem was though that asking over $100,000 for a Volkswagen is like paying for a VIP box at an Arsenal game. You'd still get the same VIP experience as if you were watching Chelsea, however you'd just be really embarrassed to mention to anyone that you supported Arsenal. The flagship Phaeton which came with the 6 litre W12 engine was designed with the requirement that it should be able to travel all day at 300 km an hour with an exterior temperature of 50 degrees Celsius whilst maintaining an interior temperature of 22. And it was this very parameter that sets the scene for the quirky nature of the rest of the car. Standard options included electric windows that could all be individually child locked and vanity mirrors with two levels of magnification. Optional equipment included things like rear massage seats which had seldom been seen in 2003 when the first production examples of these hit the road. Within our £5,000 criteria there's two options, a 3.2 litre V6 petrol or a 3 litre diesel. The diesel is probably the one to have as it's actually quicker and more economical. There were also 8, 10 and 12 cylinder alternatives available, a 6 litre W12 as mentioned earlier, a 4.2 litre V8 petrol and Volkswagen's famous 5 litre diesel V10. However, looking through the classifieds right now in the UK, I can't see a single example of any of these currently for sale. £5,000 can get you a 2010 model with around 100,000 miles on the clock. If you're feeling brave though, you can find Phaetons today for as little as £2,500. Crazy when you think that some 15 years ago, they were worth almost 20 times that. Lastly, don't forget that some of the switch gear and equipment like the steering wheel and instrument displays in the Phaeton are more or less identical to what you would have in a Bentley Continental GT from the same time. And of course, if you do find a W12, you're basically getting the same power plant as what's in the Bentley 2, minus the Bentley's turbos. Number two in our list is another overlooked luxury car, the Jaguar XF. Unlike the Phaeton, these are quite common and well known. However, most people, and myself included, will be surprised to know that you can buy a Jaguar XF that's only 10 years old for five grand. The XF was launched in 2008 and Jags still make the model today. Every model came as standard with leather and fancy rotating air vents. Pre-2009, there was only one diesel engine option available in the form of a 2.7. However, in 2009, a three liter diesel was brought out and that's the one you want to go for. It does 0 to 60 in under seven seconds whilst maintaining the ability to generate 50 miles per gallon on a run. Various petrol options were offered too, right from a three litre V6 to a supercharged five litre V8 producing 540 horsepower. The V6 and in some cases the earlier 4.2 V8 can be found within 5,000 pounds. If you can get a V8, go for it. The 4.2 is a gorgeous engine and it'll still get you 35 miles per gallon on a run if you're really, really careful. If it had to be a six cylinder though, I'd take the diesel. Annual tax is half of that of the petrol for some model years, yet fuel economy double. The non-S diesel is also quicker and develops a bucket load of torque in the region of 370 pounds feet worth. Providing you're not so fussed about ULES requirements, these XFs are a great buy. Five grand will comfortably get you in a 2009 or 2010 with less than 100,000 miles on the clock in a good spec. Like with the Phaeton, if you're on Penny Watch, you can get a half decent one for three grand, although be careful as sometimes if you buy cheap, you'll buy twice. 
Moving on to something with seven seats now, and of course it's got to be the Volvo XC90. Launched in 2002, this was Volvo's first SUV venture and can now be had on the used market for an absolute bargain, less than two grand in some cases. When it was launched, it was praised for its incredible safety features, such as a reinforced roof, and apparently even now the XC90 has a zero fatality record. It's also extremely practical with seven seats and a split rear tailgate. As standard, they're very well equipped. Being Swedish, of course, you'll find heated seats. You can also expect to see cruise control and an electronically raising infotainment screen. In the UK, 90% of models bought were diesel. On the used market, there's a ton of D5 2.4 diesel examples well within budget. These will average you around 30 miles per gallon, which is great for an early noughties SUV and pre-2006 models will be just £360 a year to tax. The main issue with these D5 engines, however, is they were just a little underpowered. For an almost three-ton car, 160 brake horsepower just doesn't cut it, and thus the XC90 suffers a slow 0-60 time of over 12 seconds. The more exciting option is the 2.9 petrol engine. This has a little over 270 brake horsepower and a 0-60 time of 9 seconds. It'll average the low 20s in terms of fuel economy, but is still capable of the low 30s on a run. Prices in the UK on the used market for these XC90s start at around £1,500 for MOT'd examples. You're probably better off spending a little more though, and five grand will even get you a later 2007 or 2008 model with under 100,000 miles on the clock. These are an absolute bargain, and there's not many other SUVs to be had for this price point with seven seats. So moving away a little from the more practical options, I wanted to include a car on the more sporty side. And this one I think currently represents fantastic value I personally can't see them sticking around the £5,000 mark for much longer, and it's a car that you might not think that you can afford, but you can. I'm talking about the R230 generation Mercedes SL. This car was launched in 2001 as the SL500, shortly followed the next year by the SL55 AMG, and in 2003 the SL350 was launched, offering it with a gorgeous naturally aspirated 3.7 litre V6. Each model comes with a retractable hardtop, which means on the three days a year when it doesn't rain in the UK, you can opt to have the roof down. Now, although in 2001, a base SL500 cost over 60,000 pounds, believe it or not, these can now be had for under five grand. Within our budget, you can pick up a relatively nice SL350 or a higher mileage SL500. The 3.7 V6 SL350 has around 250 brake horsepower and will do 0 to 60 in around 7 seconds. Fuel economy is around 25 miles per gallon and the tax only £360 a year. The SL500 is a naturally aspirated 5 litre V8 and has 306 horsepower. The 0 to 60 time is only just slightly better at 6.3 seconds, however, the fuel economy isn't much worse either, averaging around 22 compared to the SL350's 25. I personally think this generation of SL has aged super well and is not far from evolving into a proper classic. I also don't think you'll be able to buy these for under five grand for much longer. Lastly, and a little bit of a curveball, is this estate car, which I bet you haven't thought of. It's the Alfa Romeo 159 Sportwagon. Designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro and assembled in Italy, the 159 Sport Brake has to be one of the most beautiful estate cars ever made. In fact, comment below a better looking estate. I dare you. The Sport Wagon was only manufactured for a six year period from 2006 and so they're pretty rare on the road. On most models, when you step inside, you are greeted with gorgeous Italian leather seats, big analog dials, and a steering wheel that looks straight out of a Ferrari. Most were specced with a six speed manual, although there are some autos available. There's lots and lots of different engine variants available, both petrol and diesel. However, the standout for me would be the 2.4 five-cylinder diesel. It'll propel the car from zero to 60 in less than nine seconds and is capable of an impressive 50 miles per gallon. It's also properly practical too, with tons of legroom in the back and an almost 500 litre boot. Five grand should get you a 2009 model with less than 100,000 miles on the clock. And that concludes my list then today of five overlooked cars that you can buy for less than £5,000. 
Make sure to leave a like if you enjoy this style of video and do comment below on whether you agree with me on my opinions or not and also which list you'd like to see me go through next. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very very soon.